The next effect we can add on any of these four slots per step is the ASL0, which stands for Automator Slot 0, Slot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. This refers to the eight automator slots you have available in the automation screen. And what you can do from here, you can choose per step which automator slot you want to access. And for that automator slot, what type of parameter you want to change. This is the type of parameter, up and down, and left and right will change the actual values. Like in this case, we have an LFO, I'll show you in a second, on the automator slot 0. If I go to the start parameter, I can leave it to 0, which means it's off, the LFO is off, and I can set it to 1, which means the LFO would be active. And uh, let me show you what's going on. Uh, first of all, let me delete this here, and uh, let me show you this pattern without any kind of effect. All we have is CV notes going to the 1 volt per octave input on the Pico Voice. So this is the pitch of the Pico Voice. And we are on track 3. The trigger from track 3, these are my triggers, are going to the trigger input on the Pico Voice. So I'm setting the pitch and the trigger for the Pico Voice. Now, the Pico Voice output goes into the second filter on the Gemini 2412. And I am taking the low pass output from the filter Gemini 2412, and it goes into the second VCA channel on the Sputnik modular called VCA VCF. So it's pitch, trigger on the Pico Voice, Pico Voice into the Gemini 2412 filter, low pass output into the VCA recorded into the DAW. Very simple setup, very simple patch. On this same track 3, I'm taking the modulation output. And I'm sending this, so whatever CV I'm going to sequence or send out of this modulation output, I'm sending it to the filter CV input, the filter cutoff input on the Gemini 2412 filter. So I'm going to use this output to change the filter setting on the filter, on the low pass filter in, in this case. About the automator, I've already given an overview of this uh, feature. On, uh, on the first video, on the previous video, so you, please you can refer to that one, but I'll give you a very quick recap. You have eight slots, and per each slot you can set what type of modulation uh, CV source you have applied to that slot. It could be an internal LFO, which has these parameters you can edit. It will be in the future, it will be available, this uh, envelopes is not available yet, so I guess in the, one of the future firmwares, which of course I'm sure it will have editable, edit, editable parameters, you can use any of the four CV inputs as well. After you set which kind of CV source, which kind of voltage you want for this uh, slot, you can set it on or off, and then you can apply this CV source any one or more of these eight tracks, your six modular tracks and your dual sample playback tracks. Okay, that was a quick recap. What I have right now, never mind this second one, doesn't matter. I have a slot zero with an LFO with these specific settings. And actually, if I go into the settings, let's change the wave to not inverted and the other parameters, yeah, leave them as they are. And um, it's stopped. And uh, if active anyway, I have set it to work on track 3, the track we are talking about. Now, on track 3, which parameter you want to modulate with this CV source? I have set it to simply sending this LFO out of the modulation output here. But if I play the pattern, and now I switch the LFO on, Okay, I have these voltages going to the filter cutoff. I could have sent it internally to the actual, well, I could have sent it to the CV output. So this is now messing around with my pitch, my CV one volt per octave control. I could have sent it to the trigger length for trigger delay and other parameters really, you know, for a, for an overview of this 
automator function just you know check the first video so let's stop it i've only shown you all of these because i wanted to uh, refresh your memory about what the lfo does and uh, these are the parameters that are available to you in this screen speed range offset wave inversion see i can invert the wave i can change the bit depth the lower the bit rate the more stepped the the voltage on this lfo is going to be for you you can change the clock but you know just leave it a tick for now and you can also change the phase of the LFO. Let's go back to, to the pattern. Let's play the pattern and go back to the FX slots. So I'm going to call the FX automator slot 0, which is going to be the LFO we have just seen. And the start parameter is set to 0. If I change this to 1, I just switch it on. Not from the automator screen, but straight here from a specific step in a specific pattern on that track. And let's say I want the LFO to LFO to go off at this step. I simply set the start parameter to zero. See the frequency change effect stops. Here, it's only active from step zero up until before this command. Okay, so what other parameters can we play with here? Reset, no, I don't want to change the reset. Now, okay, the speed, we could change the speed of the LFO. What you can do as well, okay, now actually I'll show you this as it is. I'll change the speed. Uh, now, the, the values of the speed that you can change with the left and right cursor are uh, 255 values. Uh, they're scaled to uh, 255 values. So I can, you see? Okay, this was speed zero. It's running faster. Now, because I have changed the speed here, but I don't have any other speed set up here. When it loops, it still, you know, remembers this value. So, uh, remember you have a four slots of effect per step. So, apart that you could change the speed on the second step, but on this first step, I want to switch the LFO on, and I also want to set the initial speed for the LFO. So, now it's slower here, and then it goes faster here. How cool is that? <laughs> it's pretty cool. What else can we change? Let's... Uh... No, I don't want to change the... Okay, let's invert the shape of the LFO. And if you want it to be starting with uh, is a default shape, not inverted, you just set the inversion to zero. So, in other words, you are starting the LFO, giving a start speed, not inverted. But then at this step, we are inverting it. Then we are changing the speed and then we are switching it off. That's pretty much, I mean, there's a lot of control on the LFO per step in a pattern. That, that's crazy. Okay, you know, we don't need to stop here. Let's do, actually, let's do this here. Let's change something else here. I don't want to change the clock. I don't want to change, okay, the wave. We could change the wave to something else. The next one is, a, I think it was a triangle. And again, I don't want the shape to be changed for the whole pattern. I want it to be a sign at the beginning. So it goes from sine wave to triangle. And then maybe... Let's change... Another bit rate. The face. Eh, we can change the face of the LFO. Okay, 
but I don't want the face to be changed for the whole pattern. So I don't know, maybe up here I can set the face to zero. So it's just the from you know the typical LFO shape starting from zero from zero. And so on. So as a quick recap, we switched the LFO on, we set the speed, we set it to not be inverted, and we set it to be a sine wave. And we also set the phase to be zero because we're gonna change it later. Then we change it to a triangle, we invert it, we change the phase, we change the speed, and then we switch it off. Now I'm gonna take this out, so we are actually not sending the LFO to the frequency CV input of the filter anymore. And now we're going to add the per step controlled LFO. I mean, there is a, a lot of fun you can have because you need to think you have eight slots that can go to one or more tracks and then each individual pattern can have a totally different per step control of those parameters. An LFO, it could be an envelope in the future. And remember that for a pattern, you can have 64 steps. So I mean, you can, you can go crazy with the stuff. It's, it's really cool. This is really powerful. The next effect we are going to look at is the random effect. This randomizes the next effects value in the same column, on, on this same column. It's not gonna influence any of the effects on separate columns. If you want to randomize values here, you have to add the random effect on the specific step on the specific columns. So let's go back to FX1. And uh, this is the weird odd pattern I have right now. <laughs> We have, a, okay, some nodes, some triggers, some modulation, but we have a pitch effect here, which is changing the pitch a little bit. We have a little bit of a glide. We have a re-trigger. Here. It's the re-triggering. If you want to know more about triggers, delayed triggers, re-triggering, I talked about this earlier in the video, so check the description, the index description under the video, and you can go to that section. This is a probability effect. So it's changing the probability. Well, it's a sign of probability that these following steps are going to play or not, or the trigger specifically. And then some uh, more glide with a zero 02 instead of zero 01, so a little bit more of a glide, and then a glide back to zero 00. Let's see what happens when I start to add some random effect. Remember, the random effect randomizes the value for the next step. So if I put a random effect here and I activate it, it's going to change the pitch effect. I'm setting a few random effects around, but I set to zero, so these are not influencing anything yet. And now I'm going to... But they are actually working. So this is randomizing the pitch. This is randomizing the glide amount. This is randomizing the trigger, re-trigger, you do the trigger value to something else. This is randomizing the probability value for the triggers. And this is randomizing this glide effect. So every time the pattern loops, it's gonna have a possibly a different value for the effects that are affected by the previous random effect. Thank you. 
next effect we are going to look at is actually a, a number of effects. They are called special effects. Now, these are simple on or off special effects. It's not like having a type of effect and then a range of values per effect. For example, you know, there are things like uh, stop a track immediately, stop a track at the end of the current pattern, stop the whole song on a specific step. So I have a little, let's say, not a silly track playing just to show what the special effects can do. Let's go into this pattern, uh, this one. All right, special effect zero zero is empty, known, so it doesn't do anything. Special effect zero one. Now I am in this pattern. So what this means, when the song plays and then it reaches this pattern and then it starts to play this pattern, as soon as it runs over step zero one, it will meet this special effect zero one, which is stop track at the end of the pattern. So this pattern will play until the end and at the end of this pattern, this whole track will stop. So this special effect zero one is stop the track at the end of the current pattern. The other tracks will keep playing. So let's have a look. When the song starts, at this pattern, that's it. The pattern is finished and this track has stopped playing. The other tracks keep playing. Now, if we go back to this uh, same pattern, and we change the special effect to zero, two, this will stop the track immediately. So again, we are on the second step of this pattern. I'll play the song, and when we reach the second step of this pattern, this track will stop immediately. Not at the end of the pattern, but immediately on this second step. <laughs> So you heard that point because he played the first two steps and it stopped. Now, special effect 03, which is stop the song immediately. Stop the song now. So this means that when the song reaches step two on this pattern, the whole song, all the tracks will stop. <laughs> There you go. So if you want something like that, <laughs> just uh, put a special effect 03 and it stops everything uh, together. Special effect 04 to 0A. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate because they are, uh, this is about the uh, clock output and the reset output. Uh, so it's a, a set the clock output, reset the clock output, pulse the clock output. Set clock reset output to reset clock reset to put pulse clock reset output. Uh, okay, it, it's uh, it's got to do with the output reset and uh, clock. Now, I don't have other clock based receiving devices connected to the NerdSec because I'm focusing in these videos for now on what the NerdSec offers on its own, you know, as a sequencer, sequencing its own 10 tracks. I don't want to complicate things right now, syncing other devices and so on. So we may look at uh, these uh, special effects having to do with the output clock and reset in another video, possibly. So after 09, we go to 0A, and this is uh, reset all the effects values of this track. So what it means, you may have uh, effects being modified and so on. If you want to reset all the effects, you just put this special effect in. And that's what you get. A zero B is reset all the effects values for all the tracks. So if it comes a moment where you want to reset all the effects, you don't want any hanging uh, change of LF or speed or whatever, you just put this uh, effect zero B and it resets all the effects for all the tracks. Next is uh, zero C, which is random jump. With this, it will make the sequence in this pattern 
jump to a random position in the same pattern. So let's do an example like this. Let me add another uh, note here just to make things easier to, um, to understand. Let me delete this break here and uh, I'm going to show you how to copy everything and paste it, but we did this in video number one. Then I'm going to select this. Paste it. Paste it. I just went 16 steps down and uh, paste it. And that's the end of it. So what we have now. So I just copied these first 16 steps and then pasted it three times. So we have a 64 steps pattern. Okay, I got rid of the break point uh, on step 16. When the pattern plays, every time it gets over this step, it will jump anywhere, random position within these 64 steps. For example, if it goes here and then it jumps from here to here, it will play these steps, then hit this jump and jump somewhere else. So it's going to be hard to follow on the screen because it's going to jump to a random step. It could be all the way down here. But you should be able to hear that the sequence is jumping around. See, it's already disappeared because it's gone from here somewhere else. See, you now appear around here. Now there. Like, went somewhere else. And so this is a way to, I mean, it's another way to add some sort of variety to a repeating pattern. So you could have a pattern full of notes that make sense for, you know, for your harmony and so on. But it plays different sections of notes randomly based on where it jumps to when it hits that place. One uh, suggestion I would like to make here to XOR Electronics is this. Okay, let, me, let me show you this. Let me do this. I go to the second screen. I select everything actually all the way to the end i'm going to delete it okay then i'm going to go to the first 16 steps and add a breakpoint okay so now if i play this pattern let me switch this off to zero it's just looping this pattern now if i add a a random jump. Now, this random jump jumps to any of those 64 steps in the pattern. It does not take into consideration the breakpoint. Which means now, for example, it jumped somewhere else. But I don't have anything down here. So that's why now sometimes you don't hear sound. Sometimes it's a sound that will keep playing. So my suggestion is to add maybe another random jump special effect, but they take into consideration the breakpoint. So if I have a breakpoint set on step 16, this random jump should only uh, randomly jump to a step within those 16 steps. If I had the breakpoint on step 32, it should only jump to any of those 32 steps. Next, a couple of uh, utility effects. 0D, it resyncs. Uh, the track to the main clock it synchronizes it on the zero cross, you know, the zero cross of the main clock. And zero E, it resyncs all the tracks to the main clock. Again, synchronizes on the zero crossing of the main clock. The next effect we're going to look at is the, not this one, where we go to the BPM. There you go, BPM effect. Right, the project is now at 128 BPM, and uh, actually this BPM 080 corresponds to 128 BPM, you know, these are scaled values anyway. So, if I was to play this sequence as it is, and now this is not going to change anything, because as I said, this value corresponds to 128. Yeah. 
So, this sequence is playing. Now, you can add a change of BPM to any step of any pattern. So you have uh, different BPMs across your patterns to create you know, a weird tempo changing effect. Yeah. So, I don't know, let's add a slowdown here. Maybe go faster here. And then maybe go much slower here. And uh, let's set uh, just make this faster, otherwise, it takes long. <laughs> even uh, mix some of these with for example the random common number effect we saw before so you can randomly change these values every time the sequence plays through effect. This is a transposition effect, which if set to zero does not change anything. So it, I'm just going to play this pattern. Base zero, zero doesn't change anything. If I go zero, one, etc., it's going to increase to, 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 to a higher pitch. You just transposing up. And if you were to go below F, They are transposing down. Let's, let's set this back to zero. Let's go back to the sequencer and stop it. Now, this pattern is identical to this one. Okay. If I play these two, it's just the same pattern that repeats different name because it's a copy but it's a copy now if i change i'm going to this pattern the base effect to let's transpose up okay this is transposing and this is not i'm just doing this to uh, reinforce the, the uh, concept that the base effect only adds a transposition a transpose effect to the following steps in that pattern where you have the base effect. This transpose effect does not carry on to the next pattern in the track. Right? So the base effect is only for the pattern in which you use the base. As you change to the new pattern, there is no base transpose effect anymore. This is the end of this section. The next video and a few more are almost ready to be uploaded. So subscribe and check back often. If you subscribe, go to my channel page, top right under the banner, there is a little bell icon. If you click on that, you will be notified when new videos come out. Please support me, help me out by liking the video, sharing the video on forums, on Instagram, Twitter, on your Facebook page. Just try to spread the voice around so more people can watch this video and I can also get more feedback on uh, 
but maybe how to improve and content to cover next. Let me know in the comments if you find in these videos enjoyable or at the very least useful. Thank you for watching and until next time, have fun and keep Euro rocking. Bye.